All right, so looking at the unit four skills review, the first set of questions are asking us to classify what these angles are. And number one, because it has this little square in the corner where the two angles meet, the vertex, we know that that means it's a 90 degree angle, that that square is only present on 90 degree angles and anything with that is a right angle. So that is a right, you would put right for question number one. Question number two, we see that from coming up from the base ray, it's extending, but it's not extending to the perpendicular point. So anything short of that classifies as acute. The way I always remember it, I'm like, oh, it's such a cute little angle. It's so small. So that helps me um, remember that. Then the third one extends past the 90 degree point, but not into a flat angle. So because it's an oversized angle, it's obtuse, okay? And so then question four, it goes, the two angles split apart. I'm not, I'm not flexible enough to make it a straight. We'll do this. There we go. It's crooked. There, pretend it's a straight line, okay? Uh, when the two rays go in opposite directions and the arc makes a half circle to show the angle, that half circle measures 180 degrees and straight lines have an angle of 180 degrees. So straight would be your answer. Okay, question number five asks us to determine whether the given angles are complementary, supplementary, or neither. I know that complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So to find out what they are, in order for it to be supplementary, it'd have to be 180. And then if it wasn't either one of those, it would be neither. So I would need to add up 17 and 73. So when I do 17 and 73, seven and three is 10, seven, eight and nine is two is, is 90. So because it's 90 degrees, I know that this is a complementary angle or this is a complementary pair of angles, okay? So we also know then, in order for it to be supplementary, the two angles have to add up to 190. So for question number six, it finds, it tells us that one angle is 70, and we have a second angle, and it's supposed to equal 180. Well, we can then use the addition property where to isolate x, we get rid of whatever is sharing that side with the x. So instead of having 70 here, I need zero. But if I take it away from the left, I need to take it away from the right, leaving me with X all alone on this side. And 180 minus 70 gives me 110 degrees. You're not going to be able to put the little degree circle on your test, so you'll just spell out degrees. All right, I made that maybe a little more complicated than you needed to. Just take one, take 70 away from 180, and, and there's your 110. But here's your official formal equation. All right, so then if you have a So question seven asks us to find the complement of 161 degrees. If you're like me, you'd be like, wait, what? Aren't complementary angles only adding up to 90? Yep. So no such angle exists because you cannot have a negative angle. The only way you can cut 161 down to 90 is to have a negative value and no such thing exists. So it was a trick question. Okay. Um, then for eight, it's asking us to find the missing angle of this triangle. Because if we look at a triangle, it has a base and then it has one angle going around. Because if you think of this as a circle, it's, it's flat. And when you're going up and arcing around, what's the degree of that? It's 180. So all three sides of your triangle add up to 180. Okay, so we have angle one plus one, two, three. Uh, plus angle two, plus angle three, we know that it's totaling 180. So if in the example it gives us um, angle, well, in this case, it's A is missing. So B would be the 93 plus 31 equaling 180. 
I add these up to get 124, and I need to take 124 away from 180, which is going to give us the, <laughs> not 156, just 56. So the third angle, or I guess in this case, the first angle would need to be 56 degrees. Question nine and 10 are asking us to find the perimeter of a square and a trapezoid. That's just the outer length. So if I have a square where one side measures five and a half, guess what? All of the sides measure five and a half. So I can just multiply it by four because I have four sides measuring that dimension. So 5.5 times a four, zero and two and 22. I had one decimal place in the problem. So I need one decimal place in the answer. Oh, look at that. It works out so nice. P equals 22 centimeters. Anytime you are asking about the exterior length of a shape, whether it is the perimeter of a polygon or the circumference of a circle, that is a linear one dimensional measurement. It's a length around a shape. So it is only a singular plane measurement value. Okay. Here for the area of a trapezoid or the perimeter of a trapezoid, I'm just adding all the sides up. 18 and 18 gives me uh, 36, 35, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, meters. Okay. Our next shape is a parallelogram. It labels it as a polygon. Uh, and it wants us to find the area. Anytime we have a quadrilateral like this, we can, a quadrilateral is just a four-sided figure, two-dimensional. We're just multiplying the base times the height. And we know which is what by where the perpendicular height is coming out of, okay? So it gives me this, and this is a two kilometer, oh. Okay, so this is one of those scenarios where you ignore that the dimensions represented or the lengths represented do not match the numbers that they're giving. It doesn't matter. It's actually saying this upper side here is two kilometers. And then the height is four kilometers. All right. I had second guess that because the height is coming, this 90 degree perpendicular corner is coming out of the top, which is indicating this is our base because the base is always where the, the height, the perpendicular line for height is coming out of. We just multiply our base times our height. Our base is two, our height is four. So if I have two times four, I have eight. And we have kilometers squared. Or if you type this in, so if you, when you type this in for the test, you would have a space and write km caret two, or you could say eight square kilometers. It might even have km in there. The test is very particular and wants those units of measurement. So don't worry if you type it in wrong uh, and you don't get the point, I'll double check it that we're actually indicating the same thing. But if you leave the square off of this when it's dealing with an area, even if your number's right, I can't give you full points because area is saying how much flat surface amount is being taken up and it's not just a one unit it's a length by width so there's there's a, a chunk that comes with each one of these it's not just a straight eight it's like eight boxes within this larger shape okay area of a trapezoid again all of the formulas for these things are in the test so while it's good to try and remember them you'll have the backup by having the value there so the area of a trapezoid is leg A plus leg B cut in half and then multiplied by the height of that. 
because in trapezoids, usually one side of it, of, of the two parallel sides, one side is shorter than the other. So by dividing it by two, you're kind of giving, getting an average length that the base would be. And once you get that average, you can then multiply it by how tall that shape is to be able to find the area of it. So if I have a trapezoid that is measuring 18 by eight by nine, okay? And these are all feet, okay? So this is really short and this is really long. We plug those in and cut them in half to find the average in between point. So then we can multiply that in between point by the height. So 18 plus nine is gonna be 27. And I need to cut that in half. And there's gonna be a decimal involved. And I'm just gonna make things easier by grabbing a calculator. And you too will be allowed to have a calculator on the test. 13 and a half. So my base is going to be 13 and a half feet that I then multiply, it's not 18, it's eight feet, and multiply it by eight for the height, that's eight, to get a total of area equals 108 feet carat squared, because that's how you would type it into the test, or square feet. Then the area of a triangle. We know that when we have a parallelogram, okay, we are multiplying the base times the height, right? Base times height. Well, the triangle asks us to do that as well, but then cut it in half. Because if you look at this, that's a triangle shape. This is also a triangle shape. So they are equal values. So that's why we just cut it in half to be able to account for the area of a triangle. My triangle has a base of four and a height of three. Four and three. And so if I multiply the four times the three, I get 12, but that would be accounting for this entire space. And I don't have that much, I have half of it. So that's why we go 12 divided by two to get six feet, this is feet, oh, inches in this case, inches. And it is still a squared value because it's an area. Area is always squared. Questions 14 and 15 are related to the circumference and area of a circle. So our formulas for circumference are either taking pi, which in our case is just for our easy calculations is gonna be approximated to 3.14. And we're either gonna multiply it by the diameter, if we're given the diameter, or we use the two pi r formula, which is asking us to multiply, or basically is telling us to double the radius, which, twice the radius is the diameter, and then multiply that by pi. So really use whichever one based on the unit of measurement you're given. Well, we're given radius, which is half the distance across the circle from the center to the circumference. We need to double that. Well, three twice is six, two twice is four. So I have 6.4 and I need to multiply that by 3.14. 0.14, so we'll get our handy dandy calculator. 6.4 times 3.14 is gonna give us a perimeter of 20.096, and this was meters, and because, again, it's circumference, the distance around, it is one length, so it is just a plain unit of measurement. Okay, now for this one, it wants us to find the area. The formula for area is pi r squared. We can kind of remember that this is the area formula rather than the circumference formula because areas, unit of measurement is always squared and here's a square in the formula itself. So it's kind of a little tip. Um, and in this case, it gives us diameter. We cannot plug in eight for the radius because this is the diameter, which is twice the radius. I need half of that 
to plug in. So half of eight is going to be four. So I need pi four squared. I evaluate my exponent. Four squared means four times four, which is 16. And I'm going to multiply that by the value of pi, which is 3.14. So 16 times 3.14 gives me the area equaling 50.24 meters. And again, because it's area, we square the unit of measurement. All right, so this first shape, uh, I, I didn't put the units on it just because it takes up too much space. Um, this first shape is asking us to find the perimeter, the total distance around. When we have something fairly simple like this, finding the perimeter is pretty, pretty cut and dry because the formula for perimeter, perimeter is always twice the length plus twice the width, right? Well, hearkening back to my spaghetti noodle example, if this entire noodle is 25, that means the, the lines that are running parallel to it, because they are covering the same distance, guess what? Those two pieces also equal that 25. So if I have a twice the length, then, if I know that this distance across the 17 and these two parallel lines running the same direction are also covering that exact same distance, guess what? That is also 17. I can double my length, double my width, and add them together. That is going to be really actually all I can do because I don't have enough information to solve for my unknown side. So I double one length, I double the other length because it's still all being covered. I don't care how much is being taken up by the inside. I want to know how far around it is. So 25 twice gives me 50 and 17 twice gives me 34. So when I add it up, I have 84. And it said the uh, measurement on this is units. So my perimeter is 84 units. Now here, it wants me to solve for the area of my figure. Okay. I have a couple different ways I can do that. I could know that, oh, well, this is a length by the width. So I almost have this nice little rectangular space, but I have a little sp spot here that I would have to subtract out. So I could do that. Um, so I could, well, if I know my total distance across is 15, and this much is made up of four, this much is made up of five, how much would this mi middle dimension be? to account for the same distance. Well, four and five is nine. So that means this middle distance across, we need to be six in order to add up to 15. So remember full noodle broken into three parts. So I would have a six for that length. So what I could do is just find the total space and then take out this area from it. So if I have 19 times 15, I get, a total of 285 made up for this entire space. But I don't have this amount, but I know it has a dimension of four by six. Four times six means that there were 24, the area here is gonna be 24 units of whatever. So if I have 285 and I subtract this 24 from it, I can find out how much remains. So I would have an area of 261 feet squared, okay? You could also do what we done earlier, uh, have done before, where we break this into smaller manageable rectangles or squares. It's, it's gonna be more work. This is the most cut and dry option, but let's practice that. Okay, because it's always good to have options. So 15, 19, 4, 
four and five. Okay, so I don't nest. So what I can do is I can turn this, cut this into a square, measuring four by four to get me 16. Okay, and here, because I know this length is four and this length is five, this is going to be 20. Okay, now I just need to find out what's here. I know the distance across is 15, but I do not have a height of 19 anymore because of this entire distance down, this much of it measured four. So I would take, need to take that away from the 19 to find out how much remained in this length. And if I take four away from 19, it means this has a dimension of 15. So instead of 19 there anymore, I now have 15 by 15. And when I multiply those two together, I get 225. 225, okay? So now I have an area of 225. I have an area of 20 and I have an area of 16. So if I add them up, six and five is 11, two, two, it's four and add two more to that for six and two. So I got 261 again, feet squared. I just did it in a different method. So it really matters just whatever your preferred option is. I would say our first one was simpler, but this one is equally valid as well.